Welcome to this episode. It was inspired by a trip to Switzerland. I had done an episode about bringing wellness into travel, but that whole concept came from this trip. And so I want to be able to walk you through on how I really created this one-of-a-kind trip for myself that I feel so lucky to experience. So if you're ever in the thoughts of going to Switzerland, please listen in. But even if you're not, there's so many tips into making sure like your trip is something that you're just so grateful to experience. I just feel so called to share because it, honestly, like I feel like I came back a different person. So thanks for being here and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to Float Activity, a place to inspire and empower beings to embrace self-love and self-development for an achievable balance of productivity. I share different ways to come back to your intuition through spirituality, self-care, human design, cycle planning, wellness, and everything in between. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you've been here with me before, thank you so much for coming back. I'm so excited to join you in this journey as we learn together. Welcome to Finding Wellness in Travel. This trip is specifically about a trip I took to Switzerland. There's so many great tips, even if you're not planning on going to Switzerland. But it's a way that you can really take an opportunity when you get to take a trip, whether it's a few days, whether it's a week, to be completely transparent and honest. I did not think a trip like this was anywhere near in my future. I feel like a lot of the tips and tricks are going to be a little bit difference. It might take you out of your comfort zone if you're going somewhere else or local of how you can build this into a trip and make it something specifically supportive for you. And that's the point of me sharing this is just encouraging you to create these like toolkits to support yourself, not getting to a point of being overwhelmed because I'm at a different place emotionally than I thought I was going to be on a trip like this. So that when you get an opportunity to experience something, you can really fully be in the moment. It's one, taking an aspect of where you're at in your cycle, if you experience one, but also know that that is playing into the moon energy. And so I always suggest people using the moon as navigation in just building these different procedures to make your life kind of flow. And like when you have a procedure in your life, things are easier. When you build a procedure of a product, it will be efficient. Even if you don't experience a cycle, it's so important to have a standard operating procedure and one not better thing than the moon if you don't experience a menstrual cycle. It's also being open to the moon energies in planning a trip. But guess what? This trip isn't fully based around a cycle. So stay tuned for just the things that I suggest and the experience because there are so many nuggets of just clarity and things that I experienced on this trip that I just feel so called to share with all of you. So thanks for being here. So the biggest piece to this trip to Switzerland was never thought a trip like this was on my horizons. Things have been different in the fact of finances because I once had more income because I worked. Now I'm trying to build a business. So any extra money that comes about is going towards the children or my business. So to be able to take money and be able to go on a trip like this, I just didn't think it was possible. And so there were so many aspects to it that just aligned. And that was the biggest piece was when this opportunity came up, one, I didn't see it coming. Two, I kind of was like this feels really good to me, this whole concept. So while normally in a situation like that, I would have felt restricted in making a decision like this to be able to take money, go on an 11 day trip without my family, I honestly was like, no, there's no way that can happen. I kept saying, what if? What if it can happen? I took out the need to control it. And I was saying, if this is meant to happen, all the things that need to happen will work out. I stopped worrying about the outcome and just took it as is. If I meant to book a flight, make it easy. And it was. I was able to use points. So I honestly didn't even have to pay for my flight to Switzerland. And if I did, it was about $600, which I mean, a lot of the places in the US are probably that much money now anyways, too. So to know that I could go to a place like Switzerland at that 
point when I had points for it. Okay, check. I was worried about the financial aspect because while I knew some pieces of it, points and things like that were going to be covered, I was like, how is this really going to be the case? The money that I'm trying to put aside, is it going to be enough? You know, we're cutting into savings for something like this. A few weeks prior, like we were gifted money. We already decided it was okay for me to go to Switzerland. So it wasn't even like we were waiting for that to make the decision. I was like, that is the only thing standing in the way of fully being able to be in the moment with this trip was worrying about it. And then this gift came about and I was like, okay, well, I asked the universe, it showed me and I'm grateful that it came at the right time. And so then I was able to lean into this trip a lot more. That was a piece of it was the controlling of the trip. I wanted to be able to have things planned. I wanted to enjoy the utmost experience. But sometimes when there's too much planning or too much into it, I was afraid that it was going to, again, take me out of the moment of the experience. This trip was the perfect amount of planning and letting the universe lead the way. We ended up having a long layover in Philly. And I used that time for these courses and workshops that I hadn't been able to get to. And so I wanted to use it as kind of this momentum into this self-investment piece because the intention I had on this trip was I was not going to work towards my business like anything for it but where I was at in my cycle I wanted to be very open with courses and self-investment. And so while this is investing into my business, I wasn't going to be writing content. I wanted to lean into knowledge and that's what felt good to me. And that's exactly where I was in my phase. I was between that spring and that summer space in my phase. Being able to focus on my self-discovery, that was number one on my list. It was having these resources and then using the ones that felt good to me. And so I wasn't searching for these things while I was on my trip. I knew the aspects of the things that I wanted to work on and invest in myself. That was my number one intention. And so besides this self-investment piece, courses and whatnot, I wasn't doing any work, but I was absorbing information. I did record content in the sense of I love nature. I was blown away by what I was seeing. And I just was like, I know being in this experience is beautiful. I also want to be able to be in this experience when I leave. And so recording stuff like that was really important because it was the most surreal views I've seen in my life. And that was one of the intentions I put on my vision board was I wanted to be able to go to a place where the view alone was all I needed. I have never been to a place like Switzerland's And that's exactly what it was. It was like everywhere I went had something that was just of magnitude. And being someone that loves taking pictures, that filled my soul in so many other aspects. People kept asking me what I wanted for my 40th birthday. I think I want to do a retreat. Like I just want to go somewhere for a week, be able to just like fully reset. And people are like, what retreat? What retreat? While there was awesome retreats that I saw, there was nothing that spoke to me. And so I kept just being like, I want to have something that is an experience that is life-changing. And that's when the Switzerland trip came to me. And so I didn't go searching for it. And so I think that's the biggest piece is if you're looking for something that really transforms your soul, it also probably depends on your human design. So I will say that. But for me, being a manifesting generator with a sacral, I wanted to have this out-of-body experience, and I ultimately did. That's the biggest piece of this, was the intention of what I wanted. I communicated it with the universe, and then it came to me. And I know it seems crazy, but like, that's how manifesting works. I wasn't asking for the money to go on the trip. I was asking for the experience, and that experience came. Guess what? How it happened? I didn't really have the money for the experience, but the experience happened without needing the money. This is a big piece to manifesting is stop asking for the money. What is it that you want to experience and try to call that in? If it's meant for you, it will find you. If it's not, something better is on the other side. That's where the power comes because how do you feel in that experience? If you're not feeling good in what you're trying to call in, you're not going to get more of it. So you got to feel good. That is how I stepped into a trip that blew my mind that I didn't think was possible. Get clear how you want to feel, what you want to experience. Be patient. 
know that the timing when it's supposed to come will come. And so let's get into it. Let's get into this trip. I'll talk about some experiences. I'm just more going to talk about the pieces that rejuvenated my soul as I went through on this trip. It's showing you the things that lit me up so that it inspires you to find the things that are going to light you up on an experience. It's not about just going on a trip. It's like taking it to another level. What can you do for yourself as you experience it? And guess what? It's not always doing things that other people are doing. So having kind of wiggle room so that you can do things on your own, you can do things with yourself and being able to have the full-blown experience. If you're traveling, have someone pretend to be your assistant and send emails to where you're saying and ultimately say you're their assistant and to make sure that if there's anything extra complimentary or if there's any upgrades available to keep you in mind. While this one was a purposeful upgrade, this was not due to this strategy. It was very helpful in a lot of the other scenarios. The other piece was I brought like goodie bags on to the airplane for the flight attendants and everybody loved it. I had a few people come up to me. Did it get me special seating? No. Ironically, on the way home, we had the same flight attendants, but I'm not sure they it was that big of a deal that they remembered me, but whatever. It still made their day, and so that alone brought the energy of me just giving to people. And so I did feel like with that energy that I brought, we did get a lot of that. There was a lot of perks, and it could have been the places. It could have been just by chance. We did get our hotel upgraded, and so take that tip with you. Do what you want with it. It brought that vibe with us. I was there for it. So at this point, A couple of things that I did to keep that wellness in my routine. We both brought pretty healthy snacks with us just so we had food on hand and that we didn't have to like go and eat every meal. And we were trying to not eat more than two meals out a day. So we were pretty strategic in that. We talked about the food we were bringing. That was really helpful. I brought mixed nuts. I had the RX, vanilla, almond butter. Oh, it's so good. A lot of the places we stayed at included a sit-down breakfast or a like buffet breakfast and I ate so many croissants on this trip but I felt fine. I felt good. I felt like I could do it. Bringing food also helped us to keep costs down and then health-wise too. I brought my travel packs for Athletic Greens. That was an everyday thing, like no matter what. I had to get used to how I drink it. When I'm at home, I use cold water with like six ice cubes. But in Europe, they don't have ice cubes. A lot of them have sparkling water. Give me like cold water. That's all I want. That's not a thing there. It's usually mineral water and not cold. I did find that Athletic Greens was actually pretty good in sparkling water. I normally don't like sparkling water, so that was a fun little fact. Two, don't ever try to use Athletic Greens in a normal cup or a small water bottle. You'll just spill it everywhere and it's a mess. And so I did travel. I did bring one of my water bottles with me and a straw. And so every Every time I used it, I washed it out immediately. But of course, when we were at the Park Hyatt, I brought a packet down and I tried to put it in a glass and it was messy and it's such a fancy, nice place and it was embarrassing. Bring the water bottle with your Athletic Greens a thousand times over. A mistake that I made was I have this collapsible water bottle. It has a carabiner on it so I can clip it to my bag. I like the concept of it, but drinking out of it, I can taste it. I don't like it. But I thought that was the best water bottle for me to bring and it was a terrible idea. It ended up breaking. I barely drank water because it tasted so bad out of it. I should have just brought one of my swell smaller water bottles, maybe the bigger one, and just had it empty going through the airport. Live and learn. Bring a water bottle with you if you can. If Sabor has like a big filtered water thing, you can get water. Not very common in Europe. Like you actually have to pay for water. Like you don't get tap water. Not that I would drink it while traveling. I brought my travel yoga mat. I brought my oracle and tarot cards. Looking back, I brought three decks with three books with it. One, I ended up getting a deck of cards when I got back that have the descriptions of the tarot cards on the tarot cards. That would have been helpful. I probably would have only brought two decks and not three because of how much I did it. And honestly... A trip like that, I would have considered bringing one, but it's hard because I usually like a tarot and an oracle, but personal preference. Books are a big piece of when I travel, no matter where I'm at my cycle. Like, it's always a must. Now... I normally don't bring actual books. I have my Kindle because this trip alone, I want to say I finished seven books, one book on tape. So eight books. 
I would have rethought about how I packed, but I honestly don't think I could have taken anything else out. I do think my suitcase could be upgraded. It would have been worth it to get a different suitcase. I love my suitcase set, but they are super old and they're not lightweight like they are now. I felt like I packed too much, but coming back, like I used everything. Maybe too many snacks, but for the most part, I'm pretty sure I used the majority of everything that I brought. And going to a place that you're going to much colder weather than you're used to and making sure you have enough warm clothes. 11 days I was there, I brought two pairs of shoes. Now, my shoes, I am not a sponsor for Sorel. I am a lover of Sorel. I would say the only shoes I've bought in the last three years, each year I get a new pair because I love them and they're the only shoes I wear for the whole year. These boots that I got were on sale before Christmas and I told my husband, I'm going to Switzerland. This is what I want. Love them obsessed with them. I wore them 90% of the time while we were there. The only other shoes I brought were like nicer heeled boots for when we went out. So I wanted one pair of hiking boots, one pair of boots when we went out. And I am very happy with my shoe choices. But looking back, how was my bag so big with only two pairs of shoes? If my feet hurt, I don't enjoy a trip. And so making sure I am very strategic in my shoes being comfortable to me. So I do feel like how I packed my clothes was great. But packing for something that makes you feel good in your trip, we were going to the top of mountains. And so you have to be really strategic when you're going that high when it's that cold. I mean, like it was so cold the one day that like I got like chin burn, like all here was like red and whatnot. So we ended up getting into Zurich early in the morning. It would have been like 2 a.m. in Raleigh time. It was like 8 a.m. there. So we decided we were going to just drop our bags off and go explore the town. So I did not sleep on the plane, but my companion did. I knew there was going to be a point where my steam was going to run out and um, it came, but not as early as I thought. So ultimately we were actually staying at a pretty nice hotel. We were able to be upgraded in a suite. There was a sauna there, and so I'll get into that in a minute. But I've never stayed in a hotel room like this. It was beautiful. It was because of my companion. They were able to upgrade. I've just never been in a hotel room like that. So that in itself was an awesome experience. We, of course, had to get fondue. We went to um, a really good place that the hotel suggested. The next day, we ended up ultimately hanging around, kind of rejuvenating ourselves because we never slept for a whole night. The time difference is six hours, so you have to keep that in mind as you're going. And so I really appreciated the fact that we went to the sauna. My companion, she went to the steam room. There was a lounge area. And then we ended up getting on a train and we headed to Lucerne. We just went into the town of Lucerne, walked around. Um, There was like a bridge. And then we went to one of the best meals I've ever had. And so that was another piece to this trip was like the food that I had there was the best food I've had in my life. And I felt like I was so indulgent, but I had like so much energy. And I know other people have talked about the food in Europe versus the US, but like I'm here to tell you we're getting gypped over here because the quality, it it is more expensive, but like the amount of cheese and croissants I ate while I was gone and the energy I had, like it didn't feel right. But it felt good. So the hotel that we stayed in in Lucerne was probably the smallest room we had stayed in, but it just made sense. Like we weren't going to be spending much time there. So it was funny that we went to the most luxurious um, hotel room I've ever stayed in to probably the smallest hotel room I've ever stayed in. But it was like perfect for what we needed. The next morning we went to Mount Pilatus. And so if you're going to Switzerland, yes. A thousand times yes. Now there might be better mountains to go to, but what I experience, a thousand times yes. But I'm going to tell you the experience we had. So we took a cable car up to a certain place of this mountain. We're going up. At the bottom of this mountain is lakes. So it's a beautiful sight, but it was so gloomy and cloudy. I was actually like, man, this is going to be disappointing. I really want to take pictures. You can't really see anything. It was a pretty snowy cold day. And so there wasn't that many people, but we got off, we did a little hike, took some pictures, and then we continued up. At the second stop, we had to get off and then get on a gondola. And the gondola just is a bigger thing that a bunch of people go in. A cable car is when only two people, four people maybe go in. And so the gondola takes all of us up to the top. 
And like, I get up there and I I can't believe I thought I was going to be disappointed. Like we were above the clouds. Just the whole idea of it was just like that experience kind of blew my mind of like, I've just never experienced anything like that. Like I've been to the Grand Canyon, I've seen mountains, but to be on a mountain so tall that you're like above the clouds, we we were worried that this wasn't going to be like enough of a view for us. And it, it was. So that really fed my soul to have that visual experience, especially when I've never experienced anything like that took pictures, came down. We ended up taking a mini boat ride, just the timing of it. It's like all we could do. So it was just cool to see the views from the water. And we ended up eating at the same place two nights in a row. The first night, it was an Italian place. I honestly think it's like one of the top five meals I've ever had in my life. So we went back the second night. It was good the second night, but like we got different things just because how can we get the opportunity to eat at nice places and we get the same thing two nights in a row. I regret that. I would have enjoyed it the second night. Are you ready to make a real change in your life? Here are just a few benefits on working with me as a certified holistic coach. Together, we gain insight into your authentic self. We explore your design with modalities like human design, cycle vitality, and astrology. And you'll gain a deeper understanding of your unique strengths, challenges, and your purpose in life. Together, we work on improving relationships. Understanding your own design helps you communicate more effectively with other people, build stronger relationships, and have more fulfilling connections around you. We increase your productivity. By aligning your work with your natural rhythms and your strengths, you'll be able to work smarter and not harder, achieve your goals, and live with a greater ease in your life. We work together on reducing stress and overwhelm. By working with me, you'll learn how to manage your energy, reduce stress, and cultivate more balance in your life. We work on a more authentic life. When you're aligned with your unique design, you'll feel more confident, empowered, and fulfilled in every area of your life. Those are the benefits with working with me. As a certified intuitive life coach, my focus is not telling people about their human design, fecal vitality, or even a Instead, my role is to help you discover and align with your desires and take aligned action based on how you operate. It is time for you to look within at how powerful you are and welcome your intuitive intelligence. If you want to work with me, head to karadempsey.com slash offerings. We ultimately left there and we went to Solo Third. There was just like a lot of synchronicities on this trip that I kind of needed. There was a festival that was happening across the street from the hotel we were staying at. And just this festival alone really felt synchronistic to a certain piece of the puzzle of my life right now. So in Solothurn, our hotel room was a suite. And I would say this was the one I was thankful for having a suite because we were going to be there four nights. We had a beautiful view. I am so thankful for that view because the next day I woke up and I could barely walk. I was having a really hard time walking and I had noticed it the night before and I really thought like I'd sleep it off and I woke up and it was worse. Trying to like trek through with the luggage and buses to trams. I knew there was going to be a lot of walking and my feet were really comfortable but because of the sitting it really flared up my hip. That was a bummer but so thankful to be able to sit on the couch, look at swans floating in the water, swans flying. I saw this like crazy surfing thing that like these guys were doing on top of the water, but they had to be in like head to toe wetsuits because it was so freaking cold. I felt like I had my own show going outside of the hotel and it made me not feel guilty at all that I did not leave that day. I ended up getting a massage there. I had very little expectations because... I had gotten a massage on a trip in Vegas and it left me not being able to move for like 48 hours. Like it wrecked me. Like I couldn't move my head. It made me sick to my stomach. It was like the worst experience ever. So I was kind of afraid, but like I really wanted this trip to have some of these pockets of spa and luxury in it without the whole trip being that way. My birthday wasn't for a few months after, but having these like birthday surprises for myself through it. The guy did not speak English, but it was one of the best massages I've ever had in my life. Like thanks to him, my hip ended up getting better a lot sooner. But I 
did end up doing some stretches and some things. My brother-in-law is a massage therapist. And so I was like, help, I can't move. So he gave me some things to work on. And then after the massage, there was a sauna that I went to. And so fun fact, in Europe, especially in a lot of places, uh, clothing is like very optional. I knew that going into it. And then there's something to be able to experience it. I probably would have got into the sauna more if I felt more comfortable but that definitely changed the experience of it. So when we were trying to decide on um, hotel options, the, the fact that there was a spa and a sauna that obviously came with staying there, that was the one I, I really wanted. And that it was a suite. That was perfect. We went to my first Michelin star experience. And yes, like it did not disappoint. I am very nervous about trying weird foods. I'm open. Let's see what happens. My meal consisted of a mouge bouche, which was like this raspberry and salmon. I do not like salmon. And I like still ate this because it was so interesting and good. Again, what I got was seemed basic, but it was like the best food ever. I just got a, the Caesar salad and the steak, but it was like a French restaurant and it was so good. I'm going to butcher the actual name of it, so I'm not going to say it. But again, like bucket list checked, enjoyed it so much. There was a town right over the bridge. And the first day, like I said, I didn't leave the hotel. The second day, there was a market that I looked up. And so it comes with that, like knowing what was happening in the town, but not getting too attached to my plans. Like very much the fact in this. And so it was raining. My hip was still recovering. So I just did like a little jaunt through there. And we ended up having dinner in the hotel that night. And it was actually pretty good. It was more German. There's German side of Switzerland. There's an Italian side of Switzerland. And there's a French side of Switzerland. And so you'll go to places where it's more heavily influenced in that area. The next day, I was actually going to go to a place where France, Switzerland, and Germany all came together. But I thought I booked a train. And I booked a bus. And so I missed... The bus because I was at the train part, not the bus part. Anyways, I figured that was the universe showing me something different. And so I was okay with that because the timing of the buses, which I thought were trains, was weird. And I was really afraid to get stranded. This one, I was a bit more in control. It made me nervous a little bit because you pretty much had to walk 45 minutes to a hiking trail. It was all uphill, which was hard. But knowing that it was downhill on the way back was a little bit easier. So I went on this hike. There was this like beautiful building and some things that I like started to take pictures of. And like I was going there because because of taking pictures. That was my goal. The signs were not in English, but it was very apparent you couldn't take pictures. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I walked this far and I don't get to take pictures. But as I started walking on the trail and we got away from like the memorials and the church, it was nature. And like, I could obviously take pictures of nature. And so it felt magical. It felt fairy-like. And so it brought a whole different vibe than the rest of Switzerland that I was experiencing. Because like the waters were like blue and green the mountains were so tall and snow-capped and so this was like that lush green fairy lake and so that was cool like it, it was different it was nice that I got a different experience when I wasn't expecting it it was a long walk back but I made it and that night I ended up going to an Italian place by myself I'm not sure I've ever gone to dinner by myself I've gone to lunch I've gone to breakfast I've sat at places by myself so it was different but I actually enjoyed it I had bought some delicious desserts earlier in the day because there's pastries and dessert places all over. And so it felt very indulgent in the eating. From there, we got up the next morning and we were taking a train to Montreux. We were only spending one night in Montreux. Our room was absolutely gorgeous. This was one of the places where we did get upgraded. We were going to get a partial lake and mountain view and we had a full mountain and lake view. I've never had a view like that in my life. So that alone felt luxurious, but the hotel itself was a beautiful hotel. I felt like I was living in a different realm. It was so great. We strolled along the water, a lot of like just cool things along the walkway. One of them was the Freddie Mercury um, statue. We just kind of went shopping and checked out the area. And then we headed up on the cog train. And so what that's like is very different than the train we were taking. So all of our transportation in Switzerland 
was via train or bus. There is an app that really helps with this process. Highly recommend getting it. I can put it in the show notes, but like if you're traveling and you're not driving, you need this a thousand percent. Just make sure you have certain things checked off right so you're not walking two miles unexpectedly. So the regular trains are newer. They're like going through the soft and smooth. It's like that brand new roller coaster that is just like whew. the cog train is like that old wooden train where you're like and you're on cliffs. And so it's definitely a different experience. It took me out of my comfort zone. I can be not afraid of heights at all or that I can be very afraid of heights. And it just definitely put me on that other end. But the views we saw, we didn't see the other mountain we went up because it was so foggy. And this one had a, like more open. You saw a lot more of the experience. While we were on top of a mountain, it was a different mountain. It was a different experience. Again, it felt very surreal. So I'm happy we did it. And And just even the experience going up it, while scary, was worth it. When we got down from the cog train, we had an afternoon dessert and coffee. This simple experience, like, that is something that just, like, really brings me joy. And so I'm happy that we had, like, a moment of that. It felt like such a luxury experience. I've never seen, like, a dessert and coffee shop so busy. So just... That's what people do in Europe, and it felt very European, and I loved it. From there, we walked to the Chilion Castle. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Everybody talked about the sunset views. We thought we had to be inside the castle for these views. But when people say that, like, you can be on the grounds, there's places around it for you to experience the views. We got there. The castle, like, was pretty much closed. It was cool to kind of do a quick around of what this castle looked like, and then we quickly realized just being around the castle and I got beautiful pictures and videos. So that was a really cool experience. It was a little rushed to get there. We thought we were going to miss it. So if you're trying to go to the castle, just know that you don't have to be there inside the castle for the sunset. It's just being around it for the views because that's that's the whole point. And also, I did check online and the castle said that it was open an hour later than what they actually closed at. Highly recommend that if you are in Montreux. We ended up eating inside the hotel. It was actually one of the top rated restaurants in the area and the other ones were farther away and the sleep was catching up with us at this time. And so we decided, how about we eat in the hotel and then we were going to go to the sauna and the steam room when we were done with dinner. That's another piece to this was having these sauna and steam rooms. Like it's a standard practice in Europe for people to kind of like let the day unwind on them in places where you can't have your phones and you're always stimulated. And so that also is something to be said where I think electronics and all that, like they are addictive everywhere. I saw a different balance in Europe than in the US. And I feel like sauna and steam rooms, as simple as they sound, are beautiful practice. It's just hard because we don't have them in our house. You know, if you're lucky enough to have them in your gym, that's a great thing. I know there's some places around here that kind of have that all those little things that you can do in infrared sauna. That was my favorite part about Europe is having access to these places every step we took. I want to say one of our hotels didn't have it. So from there, the next day, we had breakfast in the hotel. We had a planned train. And so a lot of the other times we were leaving room to be able to pick the train that was best for us. Our whole trip revolved around this train. It was the new Panoramic Express. You could see totally out the windows. And we upgraded to first class. There was actually a class above that that we would have probably done, but we wouldn't have been sitting together. So we didn't do that. One of my favorite experiences, it was beautiful to just sit there in like these comfortable seats, know that we weren't like lugging our luggage from train to train and just sit and enjoy ourselves, look at the views. And I was listening to The Secret on audiobook. It was probably one of the most moments that I just really felt interconnected connected with the universe around me and the most luxury that I've ever experienced in my life. And I just felt like everything that was happening was just specifically for me. It just felt so good. And I loved it. We knew that going in that that was going to be our favorite part. We ended up getting some fancy cheese before we got on while we were in Retru before. And then we ordered the pastry basket and a veggie plate. And so it just felt like we were having food and had a glass of wine and felt indulgent and it really filled 
filled my soul. If I were to say luxury, that was it. And it was amazing and beautiful that I got that experience. We even passed a place called the Manifestation. And so that was really cool that I was just like sitting there feeling like I'm in it and that this Manifestation train station came up. So of course I had to take a picture of that. From there, we were going to Interlochen. And so the first thing we noticed was like all these people paragliding off the mountain. And so it's very much a place where adventure comes. That's what Interlochen felt for me. And it could have been where we were staying. And so we just walked around and then we were going night sledging. It's ultimately night sledding. Got in a van. There was like 20 of us going. There was two guys who were like leading us. And then there was like 20 people and it was mostly kids in college. So that was just kind of a little funny. Uh, But then there was a couple, but we didn't really meet them until dinner time. We even like rent gear to wear on this because we knew we weren't going to bring waterproof pants. And it's cold while we're there. We're in like snow. We go to this mountain. We take a cable car up. It did not feel as secure as the other ones. It's also pitch black outside because it's nighttime. Disappears in the abyss. Like you're just kind of like one that's high, two it's so dark out. Like what the heck are we getting ourselves into? And then we get up on the top of the mountain and one of the girls is like having a panic attack and they're like you can't go down. The gondola's closed. Another girl falls like hurts her arm and so ultimately that takes one of the guides and then the two girls they have to go back down the hill. Oh wait now we don't have someone at the back of the group. So they ended up putting this couple in charge at the back of the group to make sure we don't lose anyone. So that kind of felt odd. This isn't like just going down a mountain. You're like going through cliffs. There was equally as scary times as fun and exhilarating times. But like you knew if you went off the cliff, like you were done. I don't know. I just don't think we thought that one through, but uh, it was a cool experience. I don't know if it would have been scarier in the day because you could see what you were doing. We couldn't see. After that, you did fondue. And so that was fun. We ended up meeting a couple from New York and we had a really great time and conversation. They had just gotten engaged and they even bought our wine that we had. And we did it because we knew we didn't have that much daytime to explore. We're like, what can we do at night? We stopped in the casino on the way back. Not what we expected. We were in and out in like two minutes probably. And then went to the hotel. The next day we kind of wandered around. We got on a boat And we went to some caves. Just being on green blue water with mountains around us, it was breathtaking. Everywhere we went, like it was another breathtaking view. And so if you're looking for something like that, I highly recommend it. We did not realize what the hike would be like when we got to the bottom of the mountain and we had a hike up to the mountain to get to the caves. So that was way more intense than we realized that was going to be. There was like a bus stop at the place. And so we didn't have to like hike down the mountain to take the boat. The caves were really cool. I didn't care to do them, but she suggested we do it. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm down for whatever. And I'm so happy we did it. It was really cool. Like I've never seen anything like that. The sun was out a lot more. It was a lot warmer that day. And so a lot of the ice and stuff was melting. The water through the caves was really cool. So that was a cool experience. We ended up going back, getting our stuff. And then we were taking a train back to Zurich. And we ended up changing our plans. I think that was a great thing about how we had like certain things we wanted to do. And then we were able to assess and book hotels, other places, just with an informed idea of what we wanted to do. Because you didn't really know if you wanted to spend more time in one place versus another. We decided to go straight to Zurich because going to a hotel, packing up and then going to another hotel, like it was getting exhausting. And so that's where we just decided let's just do Zurich. It was sunset on this train back and that was really cool to experience. I would say my only regret was I wish I could have been able to take pictures of what I saw. But when you're on a train, you know, the reflection of the glass really kind of ruins it. Like a lot of times you could get off a train and get back on it. But we opted for this type of train because it was nicer and because it was a longer train that we knew we were going to be on a, in a totally different experience. And so knowing that, that there's different versions of trains. So a better train was a higher priority because it was a beautiful experience. It was also exhausting. We were on a six hour time difference and just trying to get as much done on such a big time difference is kind of hard. So we got to Zurich that night. 
exhausted. I mean, even trying to like figure out food was very exhausting. And my companion, she had to get up early in the morning. And so I just think tiredness, like we probably should have even skipped and what to bed, but we got food. Not a great experience. I actually tried to go to the sauna that night, but it closes at a certain time and I didn't realize you have to tell the front desk. And we were in an apartment, so it's not even like you can call on the phone. Like an apartment, you don't have that. So you have to like go to the front desk in your like bathing suit to go tell them to turn it on. The last day, and I was so purposeful on how I planned it like this, the last day we were in Switzerland, I had probably my second favorite thing because the train was the first. Second favorite thing, when I was researching Switzerland, it's very important to me to have that wellness aspect into it. I looked up spas and this place came up and it did not disappoint. And like, I wanted to experience something. I already had a massage, so I wanted something different. And this was it. So ultimately, I had to get on a train and go 20 minutes and then walk another 20 minutes. Walk through this cute town. I get there. And I knew about it because I looked online. But like what you see online, one, especially because it's in a different language, and I could translate it, but I was having trouble like really deciphering one thing from the next. It's one of those places like you won't know until you experience it. So I'm going to do my best to explain what it is. It's a place you go in, you get a rubber wristband, you can either go for one hour, three hours or a whole day. And you pay obviously different prices for that. You have your wristband that like when you go out, you scan so it can keep track of how long you've been in there. If you're not doing a day pass, I decided to do a day pass. Like I was like, I'm devoting a whole day to here. It's called Wellness Therm 47. If you go there, make sure you bring flip flops and a towel or a robe or both because it's a place you have to pay if you don't. And it's not that cheap. It's like a spa theme park, not theme park. It's like if you were to go to a gym, and it's like a common area, but it's like fully spa-like. So let me walk you through it. There's this big open area and there's all these different types of pools, a cold plunge pool. There's a hot tub. There is warmer pools. There is an outdoor warmer pool. There was a whirlpool that like you kind of went in a circle. There was ones that you lay on these metal bars and then jets and bubbles come up. And so it was pretty large. You got to think about all these different types of pools. They had like every temperature of pool. And so that was like the pool section. But like it was big. It was open. It was like Everybody was walking around. You had to wear bathing suits in all the common areas, which was everywhere. My favorite thing was this like stone slab. It was huge. It probably could fit like 20 people. And you lay on it. It's heated. And then on the ceiling is this like psychedelic movie above you. People were napping on it. You just like chill. But it was the most relaxing, soothing thing I've probably ever experienced. I was there probably the most. Then there was this salt float pool, and so it's very shallow, and you ultimately just float. And it's dark, but then every so often, they had like a light show in there. And so you would just float and watch this like, you know, light show. And then on the other side, there was a steam room, there was a snow room, there was a really hot sauna, and then like a medium sauna... I wouldn't be surprised if there was like somewhere in between sauna, but there was a bunch of these different types of rain rooms and whatnot. And so you can check those out. I only went in the lower sauna. I would rather go somewhere with not a lot of people. I did go in the cold plunge pool. And when I say I went in the cold plunge pool, I literally like walked in and walked out. I do think there was other like clothing optional places upstairs but again not my jam I don't need to go check that out there was a cafe in there so you could sit and eat there was just like little pods that you could nap in and so I spent the whole day there and I loved it and it was like the best way for me to kind of wrap up my trip I would honestly go back to Switzerland just for that experience or try to find someone here in the U.S. to help me build this here because like let's do it I loved every second of it Went back to the hotel, got some Italian, cute little place, uh, great experience, had some dessert to kind of farewell to this indulgent eating. We had a flight in the morning, and so this was the only time we took anything but a bus or a train, and so we took a taxi because we were really sick of like dragging our luggage everywhere. I had the pleasure of trying out one of those fancy business pods 
for an hour or so. And so it was just a nice way to cheers the trip with some champagne and dessert and warm nuts. It was only for an hour or so. It was still really awesome to experience. We got to enjoy the pleasure of the Admirals Club at the airport on the way there because we had such a long layover. But this layover was quick. Grabbed some stuff for the plane and headed on home. That time difference was tougher than I expected. But like, I'm proud for someone who doesn't work well off of sleep. I'm proud for how I handled it. That was Switzerland. I hope my tips can help you going there. I hope it can help you just planning pockets of time to be able to nourish yourself on trips like this. Because if you're always go, go, going, you know, when do you have that time to connect and have that inner wisdom? At the end of this trip, I can happily say I'm more aligned with my business vision and what I truly want out of this thing that I'm building. And that was my goal. And so I'm forever grateful for this opportunity, this experience, and like what a better way to kind of celebrate myself before I turn 40. And if anybody could try something for themselves, they have an opportunity like this, like please do it. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. If this was your first time, welcome. And if you've joined me for previous episodes, thank you so much for coming back. Before you go, could you share my show with a friend and subscribe? Those few seconds make a big impact on my show, and I'd be grateful for the support. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I love to be able to relive this magical experience and hope one day you get to do the same. If you want to learn more about the links mentioned in the show, the ads, please check out caradumpsy.com slash 62. Thank you so much for being here and we'll chat soon.